All right, I just wanted to kind of dive a little deeper into what I was talking about yesterday at PetSmart with leash pressure. I want her to understand, okay, in here, um, what, le what leash pressure any good girl is asking for and how to remove that source of pressure. So for the leash pressure, it's gonna be tension in the leash, right? Um, so it's negative reinforcement. We're applying a, a mild discomfort and when she does the behavior, that discomfort, that annoyance goes away so that we can increase the likelihood of that behavior being done again. So the reason I'm doing a lot of focus on this is because I saw in the notes that she doesn't wanna do anything if there's no like food visibly available for her. Like she's only working for food. And to me, that's just kind of, she's not 100% sure of what we're asking, right? Like she sees food and she's like, I know if I do, uh, X, Y, or Z, the food is given to me. So I want to kind of show her that if she does a behavior, like I obviously we're fine tuning what each behavior means for her. Um, and I want her to learn that if she does it, there's a possibility of a reward for her, but it's not going to be visibly shown to her. It's just going to be a product of her doing the behavior, if that makes sense. So um, I'm adding a little bit of leash pressure. I want her to understand what that means so that when she is like, I don't really feel like doing it. I want to show her like, we can do it, it's fine. And maybe there's something in it for you. So um, my outlook on that isn't so much like you have to do everything. It's for clarity's sake. I want her to understand what I'm looking for and I want to enforce things on a fundamental level. So that way when we are in situations where there is, where there are competing motivators or maybe there's a little bit of conflict, she knows already how to do it in that she's, she needs to do it that makes sense so um, I kind of go back and forth between an environment like this where there's not really anything going on playing with leash pressure um, and then we'll do like brief sessions where there's a lot of stuff happening around her with leash pressure just to help her from shutting down because if there's too much conflict and I'm also adding an annoyance to her she's kind of like mm -mm, I don't feel like doing this this is too much pressure uh, in a different sense of pressure so what I'm doing is I'm asking her to do a behavior. At the same time, I'm giving her a little bit of leash tension to help manipulate her into a position. So, Abby, sit, good. And then when she does the behavior, the pressure goes away, the tension goes away, and I mark with that good, and I can pay her if I want to. And for her, I want her to understand that good is implying I want her to continue to do the behavior. What ends the behavior is, okay, terminal marker. So we have sit, good. The difference would be, okay, would be sit, yes, she can come take the baby from her. So I use that one if maybe there's a little bit of struggle or if she does it really well, like she just flies into the behavior, I'm going to pay her with an with a explosion added behavior to kind of chase that reinforcer. So there's a little bit of, we have food and then we have play. So we're upping its value. Then we have down, good and it's really just a little bit of pressure like I'm not dragging her we don't want to drag her anything like that good um, a suggestion if you will good adding in movements I can even offer alternative sources of pressure good so that I'm showing I'm proofing the, the behavior basically so I told her to down and I want her to know that anything else that happens good doesn't mean anything until she hears okay her terminal marker very nice let's go Pressure into her heel. Good. Very nice. Whoop. Down. Good. Very nice. Great. Let's go. Come on. Eddie. So we've never done this one before, so I'm going to help her out. I'm going to go back to luring. Let's go, good. Just because she's never seen that picture before. So it's okay to go backwards. It doesn't have to be uh, linear, always progression, progression, progression. No. Nope. Let's go. Good. Very nice. Let's go. Go. Leash pressure. Good. We don't need to do that. But we're not in cream. And then when I stop walking. Good. Beautiful. Okay. So while working on this behavior, because it's, we're active.
actively teaching something, I am doing a lot of reinforcement, lots of continuous treats. The idea will be um, sit, good. I might pay her for immediate behavior. Okay. Um, I might withhold it if there's a little bit of like, she didn't really do it very well, if she kind of hesitated or she didn't do it at all and I had to ask again. Um, I'm not going to pay her for those things. So that's kind of how I wean off the need for food. I want to increase motivation by making her question why she didn't get something that she's previously been continuously getting. So down. Good. Very good. Stay. Good. We'll also do, okay, we'll do changing of behaviors. Heavy, sit, good. Hold this right here. Come. The girl, sit, down. Yes. Yeah. So I do a couple of behaviors in a row and then a little bit bigger of a reward, of a reward at the end. So that way, like, the uh, sequence of events, it weans off the need for constant reinforcement, but it also builds motivation for her to want to get to the end result of getting a reinforcer. I just kind of wanted to break that stuff down for you so that you understood what I was meaning when I was talking about using leash pressure in a new situation where she is distracted and motivated by things happening in her environment. So um, just to kind of help out with her not really wanting to do stuff if she is, you know, wants to do something alternatively. So, all right. 